Thursday, October 20th, 2011. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is going to be another incredibly important news broadcast tonight. It is with great sadness that I tell the viewers of this program that unfortunately we've been right all along about the globalist plans for this world and for our families. A global depression is being orchestrated. The entire West is being uh, shredded and turned into a high-tech police state. An iron curtain of tyranny is descending upon our society. My one goal is to light bushfires or brush fires, as Thomas Jefferson said, in the minds of men and women everywhere to recognize liberty versus tyranny. Coming up at the end of the news tonight, we've put together a piece dealing with just a small snapshot of subliminal messages in Disney cartoons, in magazine ads, uh, Sharpie commercials, uh, TV shows demonizing Ron Paul with subliminals. Very important report. It was just a small snapshot that we're going to be breaking down coming up at the end uh, of this newscast this evening. Uh, also, I did a working vacation down at the Texas Mexico border. And I'm going to break down some of what happened there. Uh, the fear of the cartels. Fast and Furious, our own government arming the cartels and in federal court admitting that they allow them to ship narcotics into the country. Then the Border Patrol uses that as a pretext to search the general public and search citizens. They wanted to search our RV, and I had a confrontation with them. At the same checkpoint a few weeks ago, I had a confrontation with them. But this time, things got a lot more heated. And, of course, the Border Patrol itself has been caught shipping drugs into the country and is named in the Fast and Furious documents being involved, allowing the guns to be shipped into Mexico uh, and cocaine into the country. Now, does that mean the individual Border Patrol agents are bad? No, I'm sure most of these people are totally innocent. I'm sure all the guys that were stopping my uh, RV uh, aren't involved in this. But they're stopping Alex Jones and my family and treating me like I'm a criminal, guilty until proven innocent. And that's outrageous. So we're going to be breaking that down uh, coming up as well. But first, let's get to tonight's first big story. Muammar Gaddafi, after 40-plus years of rule of the North African country of Libya, reportedly has been killed. And it looks just like Gaddafi. We know he did have some body doubles being marched out, beaten, and then shot in the head after his convoy uh, was reportedly uh, bombed from the air by NATO forces. Now, uh, this could be true. The problem is the bin Laden thing was totally fake. That's been confirmed. Uh, we have a government that lies about WMDs. We have a government that has been caught lying over and over again. And uh, Hillary Clinton, who was a congenital liar, has now showed up in Libya. Uh, we don't know if any of this is true. And so we'll continue to track this as it unfolds. They've also uh, reportedly uh, hid uh, Gaddafi's body, has been taken to a secret location, perhaps uh, Madame Cousseau's wax museum, uh, I'm not sure, but reportedly he begged for his life uh, and uh, then was killed execution style. So that's basically uh, it for Muammar Gaddafi. But we were told a few months ago he was killed inside his compound in Tripoli, we were also told five months ago he flew out to Venezuela. Uh, we were also told that Saddam Hussein's sons were killed three or four times before they actually were. We were told Amr al-Awlaki was killed five times before the latest killing. So, again, with known liars telling us something, who knows if it's true or not? But if it is computer-morphed footage of him being killed, uh, it's certainly better than your average video game. And Gaddafi did swear to fight to the end, so my gut, just watching the video, tells me it's real. And my gut has never been wrong. So, boy voyage, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, I guess they say death to tyrants, but you were such a little tyrant compared to the New World Order. 
and now they've put al-Qaeda in control of Libya and given them a bunch of shoulder-fired missiles, and now I have to give my rights up, I'm told, uh, because of that. And moving on to that, uh, we're told that the first TSA domestic checkpoints uh, in the nation have been set up in Tennessee. The problem is, in this little news package we're about to play, uh, over two years ago, TSA, running 14 other federal agencies, including U.S. Army, pulled over whole families, cars, shut down traffic for hours. The governor said, hey, you don't have authorization, and the governor of Tennessee was to told to go to hell. Uh, the governor in charge now, though, thinks this is all, I guess, a great idea, uh, and uh, they're reporting that the TSA uh, is not only going to pull you and your family over, but they are going to have to go ahead and grab your genitals. And if you go to a football game, NFL, they're going to grab your genitals. It's part of your slave training, teaching you you're guilty until proven innocent, and only your government can be trusted. Break-ins on the radio saying don't trust your neighbors, only trust the troll, Napolitano. Uh, Walmarts and 9,000 other locations, don't trust your neighbors. Terrorists are everywhere, only trust Homeland Security that are actually known terrorists and got the underwear bomber on the plane on Christmas Day confirmed. Uh, it, it's this message of trust us, we're going to set checkpoints up all over the country. Just amazing that this is happening. And when we come back from this piece, we're going to get into Senator uh, Orrin Hatch says TSA forced him to go through body scanners. I have witnessed people refusing in, at a California airport to go through body scanners and being ordered to, being ordered to be microwaved. And of course, it's also really uh, radiating the TSA workers who are getting thousands of times what the public gets uh, in radiation. But perhaps the little uniforms the pot bellies are wearing uh, protect them from that. So uh, here is your American nightmare. The TSA has been on the streets for years, but, but n now they're just uh, basically announcing it in the news. They're also at high school proms. This is Checkpoint USA, where you and your family are driving down the highway and a bunch of state police under TSA command, ICE is there, the Army's there, all looking at you like predators, like you've done something wrong, swarming on their enemy, the American people, all with their little drill sergeant hats on, and get your baby out of that, out of that baby seat. I'm searching this vehicle. Get your butt over there, American slave as they get ready to take us into the full depression. This is the total breaking of the American people's will ahead of forced inoculation, gun confiscation. That's where it all leads. Let's go to this report. Tennessee is now the first state ever to work with the TSA to deploy a simultaneous counterterrorism operation statewide. You know, this was a massive operation, really bringing all federal, state, and local agencies together to not only do random searches, but also create an army of agents on wheels. Friday, listeners pointed out local news saying the Army was going to be out, regular Army running checkpoints, searching citizens with police. The governor got called, our listeners called. The Wyville Police Department had plans to conduct a seatbelt checkpoint on Saturday, April 4th at Highway 64 within the city limits of Whiteville. The checkpoint was planned to be in conjunction with Homeland Security and the 251st Military Police in Bolivar. Representative from Tennessee, District 80. Sir, thank you for coming on with us. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, Alex. You bet. Now, we played the clip earlier of you on a local news station talking about Army checkpoints, uh, the mm -hmm. governor found out, thanks to you and others, and canceled it. Can you just in a nutshell tell us exactly, uh, w uh, specifically, what was going on? Uh, yes, I can. First of all, I, you know, I have got a check now. I don't have concrete facts, but I don't think the military has, first of all, any jurisdiction to be checking seatbelts. Uh, when you look at the fact of a military unit being out, uh, your, your daughter, my wife, or someone driving through a roadblock with all of these local officials, the Army and everybody out there, I think it's just going to scare people to death. I think our local and state officials have the staff when needed to check seat belts, uh, to do a seat belt check without the Army getting involved. And uh, I just don't think it's a good idea. 
Well, obviously, sir, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but yes, it still violates posse comitatus. They haven't completely removed that 1878 <clears throat> law. We know in Mexico and communist China, they have troops on the streets. This is a sign of a banana republic of a third world uh, police state. So that we don't want that. Uh, but the larger issue here is that they've announced Homeland Security wants to put 20,000 regular army troops to, to patrol America, the Naval War College, the Army War College has said their new job will be engaging us, uh, combat with the American people to stop an insurrection against the banks. Uh, so, A, are you aware of that? B, can you tell us specifically what units, how we, uh, why the Army was going to be out running checkpoints? Well, I got this news late on Friday, and when I got the news, I immediately jumped on it to try to call some local authorities that I knew first to see what was going on. And when I made the call, I found out at that point in time that the governor had already made the decision to cancel this, in which I was very proud of that. But I am not aware of Homeland Security doing this. I, I did hear that they would be involved in this roadblock issue on last Friday. Tuesday, Tennessee was the first to do this simultaneously at five way stations and two bus stations statewide. They're recruiting truck drivers like Rudy Gonzalez into the first observer highway security program to say something if they see something. Not only truck drivers, but cars, everybody should be, in, be aware of what's going out on the road. It's all meant to urge every driver to call authorities if they see something suspicious. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland security begins with hometown security. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. Uh, the airport adventures, which they now admit are going nationwide with the Viper teams at bus stops, train stops, the streets, shopping malls, random vans, sending you through body scanners, biometrically scanning 360, your naked body. Now, TSA agents are on the interstates fighting terrorism with visible intermodal prevention and response, or Viper operations. The Tennessee Highway Patrol is checking trucks with drug and bomb-sniffing dogs during random inspections. The bottom line is this, if you see something suspicious, say something about it. Now again, that's all the rollout for the public. Uh, if you saw the news articles we wrote in 05 and before that, in Texas, in Tennessee, in Florida, Michigan, California, they have Marines out searching families on Sunday afternoon. I mean, I'll hear in like Northern California about Marines tearing cars apart. And then I'll go check and call local papers, and they go, yeah, but we're not going to talk about that. And then later it comes out, you're driving down the road, you pull up, Marines come over with sidearms and get your kids out of the car. And that's all in police state for the rise of FEMA. But they say, oh, TSA's out checking trucks for bombs. Just randomly pick a state, randomly, that's guilty until proven innocent. That's the opposite of the Fourth Amendment. And they're just doing it. Just like when they have TSA stick their hands down your pants. Now they say they're going to be at malls. I mean, this is so incredible. But now they're advertising it all over the news. Now they're getting ready for the main rollout. And we're going to get to, a, again, a clip of what happened to my family. 98 miles from the Mexico border. I never went to Mexico. They're talking about building these past 100 miles in now. They've got them in the north as well. All across the country, in Minnesota and Vermont uh, and Maine and, and, and Washington State, 100 miles in, they'll have a border patrol pull you over. And it has nothing to do with checking immigration status. It's all about, quote, do you have drugs? And again, the government's been caught over and over again bringing drugs in. That's just their excuse to, A, train you that federal police are on the streets of America, unconstitutional, and B, to condition you to accept having your car searched without a warrant. Remember just five years ago, Bush said, oh, we're not spying on you without warrants. Now they just admit they are. I mean, this, this is so nightmarish. Now, Orrin Hatch said that, you know, he flies frequently, Senator and he said that the, he said, "I'm a senator. You can't make me do this." They said, "You get in that scanner right now." 
And then it's got uh, links in the article in the Washington Times. Also, PrisonPlanet.com uh, has a more detailed article on it, Infowars.com. Take your pick. Uh, where other senators have been ordered into these things uh, regardless. So, so this is about everybody being put through this, and I've seen them myself go in the diapers of one-year-old children. And every day I see them getting busted being pedophiles and robbing people's bags. So uh, this has nothing to do with keeping you safe. I mean, a terrorist might attack a cornfield in South Dakota at 3 a.m. this morning. There might be a terrorist hiding under this table. Do I need TSA here running a checkpoint outside the office? Because bin Laden might be under this table right now. He might be behind this computer screen over here. Now give me a document cam shot across the room. I mean, Osama bin Laden could be hiding behind that TV screen over there. I mean, he could be. Oh, look, that's an article coming up later. Law bans cash for secondhand transactions. <laughs> Only big box stores from the manufacturer are allowed to take cash now in Louisiana. You're going to go to jail for a very long time if you, a prisoner, are caught with a garage sale, a swap meet, if you're selling anything secondhand, including secondhand video games at your, at your DVD store, you're going to jail. Again, they're getting rid of cash. It, it, look, and once you're a cashless society, you think Bank of America and others are going to stop with a $5 fee every time you get money out of your own account? You want to be gang raped bad? You are. Okay, let's go ahead now and go to this piece. Now, I was tired. I went down. We're going to show you video of this tomorrow. We don't have time today. I went down to, to investigate the border and what was happening there with the cartels and things. I spent a few days with my family with me there at a hotel in South Padre. And the red tide hit a couple days into it. And they thought, oh, it's no problem. The hotel told me, don't worry about it. But I noticed all the fish dying and I couldn't breathe. I, I didn't know it was a neurotoxin. And my, some of my kids got sick. So on our way back, I'm not feeling too good. My kids are sick in the back. I just want to get home and 98 miles into the U.S. I never left the U.S. I pull up at the same Border Patrol checkpoint I was at three weeks ago. I wanted to go back down there and cover what was happening at the border. And I pull up, and the guy says, I'm going to direct you over here. I'm going to search your vehicle. They got drug dogs. He goes, I'm going to check your immigration status with, with a drug dog. And I go over, and I say, I know about the Border Patrol dealing drugs. You can pull it up. Just type Border Patrol caught bringing drugs in. Fast and Furious, Sinaloa Cartel, eight agencies involved in Homeland Security in allowing certain cartels to bring drugs in. They're told, let certain 18-wheelers through. And I'm not saying the individual who came to the RV was a drug dealer. No, I'm saying that this is an agency caught doing it over and over again. So they are the ones who should have people searching them, not me and my family with all their license plate reading cameras that are 200 yards before you get there. They're already running your plates. You pull in there and you're guilty. You're bad. They're the official. They're the authority like Nazi Germany. You're going to be checked. And I told them, and I meant it. I'm going to file suit on the next cop, the next checkpoint, the next garbage. The next TSA that tries to grab my genitals, I'm suing your butt. And you may beat the rap, but you're not beating the ride. It's time to recognize this stuff is going nationwide. This is a takedown. They're training you to literally be in a database when you go to a checkpoint they set up. They set up years ago the plan to have internal checkpoints at state borders random checkpoints, highway checkpoints, and now they're doing it. This isn't just 98 miles in. This is in Tennessee with the feds out of their jurisdiction. This is so nightmarish. Now, this is unedited video except for the names of my children and things like that and video of my children who were involved, who've been cut out of the video. Uh, but, but, but here it is. Nazi Germany comes to America, and you're like, but they're just checking you. Why don't I check them? I mean, I got an article. In fact, let's show the other article before we go to this. Look at that, CNS News. Napolitano DHS authorizing illegal aliens to work in the U.S. You can see the clip right there. It's come out in Associated Press that illegal aliens built the border fence. Illegal aliens 
are openly allowed to come to the U.S. And I'm not against, by the way, the folks from Mexico coming in here and wanting a job because the globalists are employing their country. The point is, they're brought in to drive down wages. They're brought in by the big corporations to bust the unions and all the systems. But then the unions are bought off, so they promote open borders instead of folks staying in Mexico and causing an actual downfall of that corrupt system, the globalists use it as a steam valve to then bring down the U.S. See, it's all divide and conquer. It's very sophisticated geometry. That's why the average person who hasn't thought about it does understand it. But again, I'm digressing. The point is, illegals, they've frozen all deportations of people from Mexico because it's political. Everybody else from Honduras, Nicaragua, China, you're gone. They had camps, by the way, down on the border filled. They had 5,000 with, with Salvadorans, El Salvadorans, just at that particular Bayview detention center. And I did an investigation of that while I was there on the radio that a, a lot of you watched. The point is, this is all going on. And so it's so asinine. Now, 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 now watch the video. This is important. Because I know the Supreme Court's rule that 100 miles in, that's about a third of the country, all the way around the nation, you can pull up the maps of this. In fact, pull up a Constitution Free Zone for folks. Just type that in and, and, and you'll get the official maps. They are searching people. And I've talked to a lot of folks here in my office. In fact, a couple of the uh, uh, guys that work in the uh, shipping and, and advertising department uh, who happened to be Hispanic, and he says, when you go through these things, you're, and they and they and they and they they do a uh, I guess stereotypical typecasting or whatever, they just wave you through because they don't want illegals, they don't want that. They're there to search vehicles, they're there to break the will of the American people, they're there to set the precedent. 100 miles into the country, around a third of our geometric geographical mass, you were searched. This is absolute bull. Now, here's the key to all of this, because I know I'm ranting on and on before I get to the video. I tell them, I know the Supreme Court's ruled you can do this. Supreme Court also ruled black people weren't humans. So I don't, I mean, if they rule I can't own private property tomorrow, or I can't own guns, or that I got to turn my kids over to the state, I'm not following it. But they say the Supreme Court's rule, we can verify citizenship. Yeah, they do these internal citizen checkpoints instead of at the border where they wave everybody through. And then he says, I say, you're looking for drugs, and I'm going to sue you. You want to violate my Fourth Amendment? He says, no, we're not. We're looking for narcotics. So he plays some little mind game with me. And they first swaggered over like a gang. And, you know, again, I, didn't, I had my camera on in my lap. I wasn't going to hold it up like last time when they said, turn your camera off, and I didn't. I said, Richard, you watch. He's like, this will be a piece of cake. And I said, no, it won't. Okay. They're going to want to pull us over. Richard went down there with me to help produce the show and driving the RV. And, and, and I kept the camera in my lap rolling. And when I got up and got in his face, I mean, this is the death of everything. And, folks, a lot of you are saying, hey, we like the Border Patrol. They're protecting us. Baloney. This has nothing to do with our sovereignty. This is about the Fourth Amendment being killed. And, again, I just showed you clips of Tennessee and other states where they're running checkpoints on the citizens with homeland security. This is about a total takeover and domestic checkpoints to travel in this country where you then just disappear. The government's already said they'll kill citizens without warrants. The government's already said they'll round people up. This is about total tyranny by the banksters imploding this country. So I'm not the enemy of these, of these Border Patrol agents, but I've studied the facts and I know what's happening. Let's go ahead and go to the report. We're not, we're, I'm Alex Jones. We already shot a YouTube video. I, I, this isn't fast and furious. I don't deal narcotics like the Border Patrol and Obama and the ATF and all you guys. I just took my family to the beach again. Okay. All right, again, we exposed the unconstitutional internal checkpoints here. And here I was wanting to go down and check out the border, go down and interview some people. That, I shot that from my hotel balcony before the red tide hit and made us all basically sick. The air was just full of that neurotoxin being released by the algae. It's being fed by all the fertilizer, artificial fertilizer pouring out through the rivers into the Gulf. And I pulled up to it and I knew what was coming. But I decided not to be provocative. It's just amazing. Look, we just open everybody's cars up. Right. 
These guys now already made him a big star earlier. This is hilarious. Again, right here, I'm not filming the drug dog, people opening their cars and it going in their cars. Because I'm last time I did film that, and they said, turn your camera off, and I refused. I said, I'm just going to sit here and hold it in my lap just to prove to Richard, who was thinking, oh, no, let's just be nice and see what they do. It was a test. I sat there and was talking with the camera in my lap, aimed at Richard, down where they couldn't see it, and I was watching them search the people's cars. I was watching them pull them over and put the dog in their car. Again, each American having their rights violated. How about we just show up and demand to search the Border Patrol agent? They'd flip out on you. Or you pull up to a cop and say, we know cops are corrupt a lot of times. I want to search you. I'm TSA. I want to grab your genitals. That cop would shoot you in the chest. And he'd, he'd have a right to. You're trying to violate his person. You're trying to assault him. But see, we're just scum citizens. They're keeping us safe. Bull. Bull. You work for a narcotics trafficking, murdering, criminal banking cartel that sees this country. And it's time to choose sides and face the facts. It's all come out in federal court. The government ships the guns worldwide and brings the drugs in. And then they got the nerve to want to search my family. And it's immigration check 98 miles into the country while they got a drug dog. We're not looking for drugs. We're looking for narcotics. Back to the video. These guys looking for their, their long lost buddies. They probably recognize us as that. All U.S. citizens. How many in the vehicle? Six. Six. All right, I'm going to have to have someone step in. Uh, that's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Hey, we're not we're not shipping any drugs like you guys do. No. We're not, we're, I'm Alex Jones. We already shot a YouTube video. I, I, this isn't fast and furious. I don't deal narcotics like the Border Patrol and Obama and the ATF and all you guys. I just took my family to the beach again. Okay, that's fantastic. I still need to verify everyone's citizenship. Well, that's fine. We'll get out of the car, but I'm not going to have you guys violate my Fourth Amendment. Nobody's going to violate your rights. Yeah, you just want to run that dog in here. I'm going to sue you for it. I'm just You go ahead and do what you're going to do. I'm going to need your name. I'm going to need everything. I'm going to file suit. Hold on. Citizenship needs to be verified. I need you guys to do so I have another agent check. Yeah, no, you want to run that dog in here. going to hold traffic. Please pull over to the right, all right? Yeah, that's what you want. Okay. He's the head of the sedan that's standing over there. Okay. Look at all this. You pay for this while the border is wide open and we're 98 miles inside the U.S. And they want to make us sit here. I put him on notice too. I told you, Richard. Here they come. Boss, how many people you got on board? Six. Six American citizens. Okay. You, sir? American yes. citizen? Yes, sir. You, sir? Yep. Yes, I am. Can you get the other three for me? Just bring the kids up here. My whole issue is a border checkpoints. One thing at the border, these things are unconstitutional, and I've. Well, it's constitutional by Supreme Court. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you got drug dogs. You're looking for drugs, is what you're doing. No, we're not looking for drugs. Really, what's the drug dog looking for? It's for human odor and narcotics. What's the drug dog looking for? It's for human odor and narcotics. Drugs. Primary mission immigration. Yeah. Well, I don't use the government's products. I'm the guy. Are these your kids? Yes, they're mine. Step out right where I can just get a visual. Yeah, come on, guys. I'm going to get a visual of my children. No, As whatever. I travel across America with my children. It's just whatever. Land of the free, home of the brave. Come on. they got to look at you. They're terrified of you. They're terrified of you. This is what you're doing to our country. No, come here, sweetie. You make it so that our kids are scared to go across the country and go on a little vacation. You guys are free to leave. Well, well, thank you for so now. We are free. We are free. We're born free, and we remain free, regardless of what you're doing to our constitutional rights. This is not constitutional, what? and this is not right. It, it's, it'll close. Thank you. It's going to be at all the malls, every sports stadium, high school basketball, junior high, Everything's a prison. You show a card to get your kids. It has nothing to do with security. The federal government is run by foreign banks that are engineering a depression. They, it's all public.
God. <laughs> I've been to urban warfare drills 13 years ago. I've been all over the country. And I've witnessed the troops training to take you out of your house and take your guns and admitting it's for America. And then I'd turn the news on and they'd say it was for Bosnia. I've talked to the military people. I'm getting chills right now. I've talked to the former judge advocate generals. They know what's going on. This is the takedown of America. How do you think a foreign corporate takeover would happen? They would stage terror. They would ship in drugs. Do you know how the British brought down China? China made drugs illegal. The British used it to corrupt the police, create organized crime, take over. Mexico's being destroyed right now. So it's going to be slurped up by the New World Order. And so the refugees of collapsing Mexico can be used to then bring down the U.S. So everybody's screwed. The globalists are masters at playing groups off against each other. I am not the enemy of these Border Patrol agents. I know they've got a tough job, and I don't want it, especially the ones that are actually on the border. But this garbage of these proliferating checkpoints, a lot of these have been here for decades, but now they're spreading all over the country. And... I remember being in California when I was a kid driving through a checkpoint 20 miles from the border, and they're like, do you have any fruit from Mexico because it might have some fruit fly or something? No, we don't. But, but again, it just grows and grows and grows. And then he's telling me, I don't want them looking for drugs. I'm looking for narcotics. They want my kids to be taught that they pull up at checkpoints and dogs come on. Land of the free, home of the brave. And I told you they'd have TSA all over the country. I just showed you that earlier. You know what? i got to finish this newscast because, uh, quite frankly, I've been sick from that red tide. They didn't tell us when I was down at the beach for two days it was going on. And we were all coughing and everything else, and my kids are sick. That's another reason I wasn't going to put up with their crap anymore because I did not feel good driving through their stupid checkpoint. And you know what? I don't fly that much because I don't want to face the TSA, and I, don't, I guess I won't go to South Texas again. And the globalists win, though. We lose $40 billion a year in tourism worldwide because nobody wants to come to America. Folks, I've talked to reporters. I've talked to Paul Watson who goes to China. China, communist China doesn't act like this. No one acts like this. I've been to third world countries. It's not like this. But because we think we're land of the free, home of the brave, we're so naive. We're going to go to break now and come back and get into uh, what's happening with the economy. It's amazing and moves to ban cash in the U.S. Well, it has been banned in many cases. I just want to point out that um, we got an incredible graphic for the money bomb November 3rd. We're barely even promoting this year's money bomb. Usually we have a month ahead of uh, time to do it. Um, 500,000 sounds like a lot, but when you got bandwidth that exceeds 400,000 a year, and then the, just the IT people are, you got it all together, it's, it's, it's nothing. We spend millions and millions of dollars a year to run this operation. It's a one of a kind. It's the only true organization that isn't scripted, that isn't off a teleprompter, that's actually facing down the globalist. It's InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. You can start giving ahead of time at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, but you also give by being a PrisonPlanet.tv member. We're gonna broadcast 24 hours that day, uh, Lord willing, and, um, it's just up to you if you want to fund this operation and let us continue and expand. We've It was listeners four years ago that started the first Money Bomb, and I was kind of reluctant to even get into it because I like to just support ourselves with sponsorship and videos and products and things, free market. Uh, but the globalists, you know, with their NPR, they have fund drives, and it's an important supplement now. It's about 20% of our budget, and we need to reach that $500,000 mark to continue what we're doing and hopefully hire a few more reporters and a few more crew members uh, so that uh, we can uh, not all work, uh, you know, 70 hours a week. So, again, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. That way we can hire more people and give a modest raise to the crew here. InfoWarsMoneyBomb. Dot com if you want to support that. But you are supporting us by being subscribers to PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going to go to break. It's the Thursday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Again, thank you for joining us as we trailblaze the information war, the literal tip of the spear, your wartime broadcast against the globalist in defense of human liberty and dignity. Now let's race through the controlled looting of our society. You've been told by Herman Cain he's got to raise your taxes to pay off the derivatives debt. You've been told by Occupy Wall Street, uh, the leadership of it funded by George Soros, we've got to raise taxes on the rich, which really means the middle class. Well, we now learn that 
plus trillion, 79 trillion to be exact, uh, has been announced to the FDIC and that Bank of America uh, is preparing to basically call for $79 trillion in further bailouts with derivatives, which is fake counterfeit assets they created, but now they get government to sign on to it like it's your debt. And William K. Black, uh, one of the former government prosecutors that we've interviewed for Fall of the Republic, uh, who's been predicting all of this, says that not with a bang, but with a whimper, Bank of America's derivatives death rattle. The problem is it's our death rattle because they've got their Federal Reserve shareholders, they've got their people in control of the regulators, and they're going to make us pay them that money. And if we don't like it, they got checkpoints set up to grab dissenters and drag you off to a gulag. They got guys for 20 bucks an hour that'll, I guess, knock your teeth off and gang rape you if they're ordered to. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, that's what this tyranny is all about. These corporate guys have set up this tyranny and all this dog training and genital grabbing and all of it to get you ready for total federal gang raping uh, at the hands of the bankers. Our government is not our government. It works for these for these crooks. I can't even handle it anymore. Uh, continuing, U.S. misery index rises to highest rate since 1983. An unprecedented 26 million Americans, we got 50 million on food stamps, are now underemployed. That means they're not on welfare, but they're basically eating ramen noodle every night. Jobless claims, again, uh, have uh, reached a key level. Uh, the, uh, CNBC has the headline, a long steep drop for American standard of living. And it uh, goes through the fact, the Christian Science Monitor also had uh, a report on the similar situation that Guess what? Globalism was designed to totally destroy the country and turn us into third world slaves, not to build up the third world. But that's okay because the CDC is reporting a 400% increase uh, in antidepressants in the last 20 years. And under the new freedom initiative, the federal government is in public schools testing five-year-olds and telling them if they have any concern or any anxiety, don't learn how to work through it to be a man take a brain-eating toxic chemical weapon. So you think 400% increase is bad? Try a 5,000% increase. Try everybody on it. I just threw out 5,000. I don't know, 20% of the public's now on some type of psychotropic that literally eats your brain. Uh, continuing uh, here with the news, I thought I'd get to this little tidbit. Any used item, including a lawnmower sold at a lawnmower shop that has new and used, a pawn shop, a bait shop, uh, a swap meet, a garage sale, cold hard cash, it's good everywhere you go, right? You can use it for anything. But that's not the case in Louisiana. It's a law that was passed during this year's busy legislative session. And they're going to put people in jail just like they do for filming police in public. First Amendment, but so what? Not in the new USSA. And so this is about outlawing gardens, outlawing lemonade stands. It's about imploding the economy and knowing you're going to try to barter during the Depression. No, you're going to be re-educated. Under Stalinist re-education, there was no cash sales allowed. There were no gardens allowed. You're getting ready for the Great Leap Forward, the new cultural revolution under bankster occupation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically uh, it on that front. I want to go now, in closing, to a little subliminal piece that uh, Darren McBreen worked on. I contributed to this. <clears throat> a lot of other folks in the office did. And there's so many of these subliminals, we could spend an hour on just each one. But I want you to notice the Sharpie commercial in here. In, in the Sharpie commercial, it was up for one second. But when you slow it down, it says, don't protest. So the subliminal message is don't protest. Uh, they have uh, different shows where they implant that drug dealers who love Hitler, uh, like Ron Paul, that just flashes for a minute. Drug dealer, Hitler, Ron Paul. Uh, again, this is out there, and it's being put in everywhere. Why do they put sex everywhere? They put sex with beer commercials or ads or whatever because sex targets an area of the primitive area of the brain and puts you into a very suggestive area, 
That's why they have info babes looking at the teleprompter like they're in love with you. And men, I, I see guys around the office. I'm not knocking them. I point it out to them. They'll see a good-looking info babe, and I'll see everybody kind of smiling and going, yeah, that's her, yeah. And everybody's kind of, ooh, because you're meant in real world. You're looking at a high-def screen. When a woman's acting like that to you, she wants to mate with you. When she's, oh, oh, oh. And so they train them to sit there and go, oh, oh, and do all of this to literally put you into a primitive mode. So that's why they embed the word sex in everything as well, is to put you into that primitive mode. So we'll go ahead and go to this piece. Here it is. The following program is brought to you in living color. Kennedy died at one p.m. Once upon a time, there were two little girls. And now we're pleased to bring our feature presentation. Every day, our senses are being constantly bombarded by subliminal messages that are found in TV, movies, and advertisements. The subliminal messages we are subjected to are unrecognizable by the conscious mind and only recognizable in our subconscious mind. The messages and imagery are passively absorbed and then stored in our subconscious where propagandists deliberately implant artificial thoughts, which in turn can affect our actions and attitudes later in life. Experiments have shown that less than one minute after the viewer begins to watch television, the brain switches from beta-level consciousness associated with active and logical thought to alpha level, which is associated with passive acceptance and suggestibility. This is why advertisers spend billions of dollars a year on commercials as well as product placement within TV shows. Political messages are implanted in fictional TV programs as the relaxed meditative state of the viewer is receptive to the programming. One example is AMC's Breaking Bad television series as it depicts a meth villain as a Ron Paul supporter. I, I, I looked him up. It's, uh, it was one of these physicists, one of Hitler's guys, a physicist named Werner Heisenberg. <laughs> Real cute, huh? In a basic college level marketing class, in, in, in your first year of radio, television, and film, at least for me, and, and then I've seen some other textbooks and curriculum and found it's also in those, but, but, but most RTF schooling, teaches you that they have had subliminals uh, for at least 70 years in the United States and Europe. And so, yes, there is subliminal messaging everywhere. It, it is all over the place. It's an absolute fact that they flicker it at a rate and that they have the televisions designed for that rate to bring you into a dreamlike state. I mean, it is a fact that within minutes, you go into a dream brainwave when watching television. Go read a book by the father of modern advertising, Edward Bernays, where he calls you a dumb slave and admits they run your whole life. I've read both his major books. One of them is called Propaganda. Edward Bernays. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes are formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we've never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. They live, we sleep, and people that are in this hypnotic state, they love the servitude. They love the bondage. They, they, they defend their prison, and it's up to those of us to understand what's happening to educate people about this. Now, out of all the dozens, out of, all the dozens of examples that are shown uh, in those clips, I thought we'd go back and show you the Sharpie, where when you watch it in real time, it's like a second flashed up there where it says, don't protest. Just boom, don't protest. 
but then when you slow it down, you see it clearly. So your subconscious mind picks it up and sees it, but your conscious mind doesn't. And folks, this is what's scary. This is in almost everything. This is a whole class of people. The advertising class is more guilty than anybody. Hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. alone who think this is funny, who think this is cute. There's subliminal, there's overt, there's color science going into this. Even people I've hired over the years who are great folks who went to normal school for this go, well, let's use subliminal to help people. And I've got to constantly say, well, that's a second long. It's not completely subliminal, but get it out of there. You know, I, I don't want to go there because we're so inculcated with subliminal, subliminally, that people that do this for a living then want to bring out subliminals. So be aware of it, understand it's going on. Let's play that Sharpie clip in regular time. What would the world be like without self-expression? There'd be no purpose. No passion. No putting it out. And by the way, there's a bunch of subliminals in here, but you saw that less than half a second and they've got people in front of it. So they're talking about there'd be no expression. So for people that consciously see it, the propaganda is so good, they're like, oh, they're saying there, there'd be no protesting. But for the general public, it's subliminal. Now let's go ahead and show it slowed down for you. Here it is. Because, show it again. Stop protesting. Stop protesting. Folks, that was a power-packed InfoWars Nightly News for this Thursday, October 20th, 2011 edition. Uh, it's, it's your memberships that make this transmission possible, then leaks out to millions of people every week on YouTube and other channels. And this is a key research arm. We're only hiring more reporters, getting uh, more research done, more graphics, more information. But we definitely need your support to make this operation continue and expand. So we have the November 3rd money bomb coming up, and I normally promote this a month out. We're, we're promoting this like 14 days out uh, this time. You can go ahead and donate there if you want. Last time we had $100,000 donated by the time it officially kicked off. We raised about $440,000. We need to raise $500,000 this year to be able to get this done and to be able to continue to grow. Please support us at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off until Lord willing tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, right here at InfoWars Nightly News.